What if I told you that if you want to shuffle like a beast, all it takes is to learn one hand pattern? Would you believe me? If you're curious or you doubt me, you're just going to have to stick around and watch more of this video. When you can do this one pattern, you'll be able to play this. And this. And also this. And believe it or not, even this. Okay, are you ready for the big reveal? Here we go. So what's gonna happen here is I will be demonstrating using the practice pad, the uh, hand pattern that's required to play these shuffles. Once I've done the demonstration with the practice pad, I will remove it and go over to the kick, snare, and hats and apply them to the actual shuffle grooves. Here is the pattern that we're talking about. Right, left, right, right, left, right. Played as triplets. Right, left, right, right, left, right, right, left, right, right, left, right, right. Let's see what they sound like at 90. So you practice these as you would with any other hand exercise that you're trying to develop. Slowly work your way up tempo-wise. In this case, let's say roughly at around 150 beats per minute. When you can do this at 150 beats per minute, check mark. Now you're in the game. So let's see what they sound like at 150. Great, you've worked them up to 150. You can go up to 180 if you like, but anywhere from 150 to 180 is that sweet spot where you can play just about any shuffle you want. You want to now pay attention to the left hand and play that with your left hand at lower heights. Okay, so you're doing this now. So work your way up until you can do them at 150 once again, which is roughly around here. Now notice how the right hand, you're starting to hear the shuffle there, aren't you? Next step now is to add the back beat. Okay, now depending whether it's a halftime shuffle or a regular shuffle, we'll determine where that back beat goes. So let's now assume that we are working on the halftime shuffle. Here's where the back beat needs to be. So where the back beat is, you're actually doing simultaneous sticking, followed by that extra lower note right after the back beat. So you're doing this. 
and you're adding the backbeat. Okay, so you're almost there now. The final step is the backbeats that are required for a regular shuffle, so you have to do them more often. So it's kind of like this. So treat those four examples, those four practice pad examples as hand exercises that you're learning from a book to develop your hands. Think of it that way. Practice them with the metronome until you get to around 150 to 180. Master that first. Why? Because once you can do that, you'll be able to do what's coming up next. Okay, so let's begin with applying those hand patterns to the sounds that we need to use in order to pull off those shuffles. So the first one that we did, the first backbeat version was this. So all you have to do now is put your hands in this position and away you go. Now if you like rim shots, you can do that on the backbeat if you like. Now when you do the rim shot, it's a little harder to get that short note afterwards. It requires some practice, but if you are not comfortable with rim shots, no worries, just make sure you hit the backbeat pretty hard. So now that you can do that, place the bass drums wherever you want. In that case, that's the Jeff Percaro Rosanna Groove. So if you want to attempt Fool in the Rain by Led Zeppelin, John Bonham, by being able to play those hand patterns, it will help you learn that a lot easier. Now I'll make an attempt, it may not be exact, but you'll get the gist of it. You'll see how this how that is going to help you learn Fool in the Rain. So there you have Fool in the Rain. Now it's not the greatest version, I'm not John Bonham, nor do I claim to even come close to his awesomeness. Those hand patterns that are developed. If you don't develop those hand patterns, it's going to take you a long time to even get close to this. Okay. So now when we're talking about a regular shuffle,
okay, that's pretty cool. But when you incorporate the hand pattern into that, with the backbeat happening all the time, Over here, you get this. Now let's switch gears here for a second. We're going to apply this to reggae, Stuart Copeland style reggae, as I call it. So if you can do this, and you move your hands in this position, look what you get. Now you don't have to play all those middle ghost notes, you can play them here and there. Insert the bass drum. And you've got Stuart Copeland. Look at that. Whoever thought that learning this as a hand pattern would lead to all these amazing shuffle uh, grooves that were demonstrated in this video. It's just amazing. So what's the real lesson here? Is it that you're learning how to play shuffles? Well, not really. The real lesson here is that when you want to learn anything in drumming, especially when it's pretty complicated, you have to strip it down to its bare minimum. The blueprint, what's going on with the hands and the feet. When you can break it down to that level and then turn it into an exercise and get it to the tempo that it's required to be, then it'll be easier to learn whatever it is you are wanting to learn. I will be making references on blueprint drumming in future videos. And in those videos, basically I will show you the blueprint. You learn the blueprint and then apply it to the drum kit and voila, you're able to play whatever it is you're learning. This approach is very, very effective and it'll save you so much time as well. So stay tuned for future videos when we get into this kind of stuff. Click like if you like this video, share it to as many of your drummer friends as you like. Leave a comment if you have a question or something you want to mention. If you do any of those three or all three of them, you're actually helping this video reach out to all those drummers who are looking for this information. Well, I hope you have enjoyed this video. I had so much fun putting it together. I mean, who doesn't like to shuffle? It's just one of the best things about drumming. It just feels good and it sounds good. It's good all around. So remember, stay well, stay safe, practice, and most of all, have fun. We'll see you on the next video. Take care.